Welcome back, lovers of the divine labor. I, your Lord Helitrin, servant of the Almighty Fema, steward to the throne of the hidden power, and messenger of the divine propaganda, have brought you here again on the first day of the twelfth week of the year 279 Ordo Ad Chaos, to educate you regarding the history of the previous age. At last you heard my telling, you were instructed in the nature of one of the major controversies that shook the foundation of our enemies, the cults of Christianity and Judaism. This controversy, dubbed the Arian heresy, dealt specifically with an attack on the Christian's understanding of the nature of Christ. It was not the only attack to be waged on this area of the old religion, though it proved to be the most noteworthy. Though this early heresy did much to divide the newly born faith, it was soon masked by another controversy, dubbed the Pelagian heresy. This heresy was different in that instead of attacking that which the old religion believed, it sought to exalt the nature of the believer, in order to cloud his understanding, and put him at war with the faith. The founder of this heresy, named Pelagius, who we know as the hero of the anarchist ideology of the unwitting allies of the human purge, took issue with the beliefs of the early church. He held that man was completely free metaphysically, and thus autonomous of both God and man's own self-evident nature. Though at the time, his belief system was quashed by the Catholic Saint Augustine of Hippo, along with other prominent leaders of the early faith, the ramifications of his efforts would prove disastrous. After his excommunication, Pelagius' students would return in many movements, though not in any substantive form until a millennia later. Since that time, his teachings would inspire our allies and church infiltrators, the Jesuits, the Protestant apostate Arminius and his followers, and the masses of fanatical radical reformers of the faith, who were early proponents of the collectivist politics that we now enjoy under the tyranny of the almighty Fema. While the ramifications for the entire faith of Christianity, in all of its various denominations and incarnations, proved to be massive, the greater consequence and most germane to our place in history, deals with all of the philosophers that were inspired by this way of thinking. The fundamental argument regarding the question of human understanding, deals specifically with whether man's ability to act is a product of his determined nature or is independent of his nature, thus the argument of mechanistic determinism in libertarian metaphysics. To break it down in its most basic terms, the question becomes as follows. Does man possess a will completely bound to forces beyond his control, or does man possess a free will that is in no way impacted by his nature or his surroundings? This debate came to a head at the time that the hidden power was re-emerging in the late 18th century of Anno Domini, and would pave the way towards the false political paradigm that eventually toppled the covenant of nations, destroying all notions of Christian liberty, and posing the members of the decaying democracies with two false choices. What was lost to most of the Christians who struggled to keep their systems in place, due to the sister philosophies that arose from Pelagianism and their hard determinism opponents, is that their holy texts taught an elusive third view known as compatibilism. This view, which was upheld by a few philosophers, teaches that man's free will is tied to his nature, and that free will and determinism exist in a symbiotic form, thus being compatible. It was largely abandoned, as was all other basic human truths, for the sake of tribalist rivalries both inside and outside of politics, despite their necessity in maintaining human understanding of himself, and thus making his liberty knowable and possible. Certain key figures in the battle between determinism and free will include, the proclaimer of libertarian socialism, Noam Chomsky, and Arinian saint, Richard Dawkins, on the latter end, and the scientist B. F. Skinner, and the social Darwinist and eugenicist champion, Francis Galton, on the former. Though you who follow the way of FEMA, understand that hard mechanistic determinism is the truth that saves you from your wicked nature, we must give praise to the anarchistic libertarian free will propagators, without which our victory over the covenant of nations would not have been possible. The blanket insanity of the idea that a will is 100% independent of the nature of that which possesses the will, served to destroy the entire concept of freedom. By it, people were led to believe such foolish fits of double things such as, anarchism is socialistic, and that chaos can be orderly. 
when the liberty lovers who fought against us at the close of Anno Domini, found themselves fighting among themselves over what liberty actually was, our victory was assured. To this, we are forever in debt to the Magus Noam Chomsky for turning the revolutionaries against themselves, and thus by philosophical treachery, bringing the masses to accept their demise at the human perch. Remember well, slaves of our beloved Helios 54, that the destruction of freedom was necessary, as it was exposed to be a pathway back to the insanity of your former ways. As you return to your labors remember, there is no compatibility between freedom and reality, not within your own minds, nor within the world that we occupy. Meditate on this as your blood and sweat fuels the power plant, and fills the stockyards with the goods necessary to maintain your servitude.